There's some other um, race-related stress impacts. Maybe you can talk about some of those. Yeah, so you know, we know this as psychologists, which becomes really important for college campuses or college administrators to really factor into their conversation, especially when they're thinking about what it means to create an environment where people matter, mm -hmm. right? If we're talking about inclusion, how do we create an environment where people matter? Um, what we know from the race-related stress literature um, that you see on the screen there is that um, people's psychological selves, their being, can be really impacted. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you take a look at the different domains there, so like the cognitive domain, if a person is having trouble thinking, like because they are having these intrusive thoughts, or they're just having difficulty concentrating, or they're having difficulty focusing on what it is that they're supposed to be working on, think about what that means for a college student, mm -hmm. right? It's a really important aspect of just getting through an academic program exactly. or making progress in an academic degree program. It's important to acknowledge that our cognitive resources are limited and need yes. to be restored on a regular basis. On a regular basis. Right. And if you take a look at sort of like the physiological, right, you know, mm -hmm. which is a, a direct connection, if you think about for folks who experience race-related stress, um, the anxiety level can be really high physiologically, mm -hmm. and we know that that is about cortisol in your body, mm -hmm. right? And if the cortisol never comes back down to so sort of like homeostasis or to um, baseline, then you're activated. Right. And what does that mean? It, it, right. it probably means that you're not getting the type of rest and right. sleep that you need in order for your cognitive processes to so sort of like be restored, mm -hmm. right? Um, the other piece there that I think is really important <clears throat> for um, students of color in particular. We, we know that students of color can talk more about the physiological symptoms mm -hmm. or signs that they're experiencing. Mm -hmm. um, we have language for those mm -hmm. things, right? Mm -hmm. We can talk about the headaches or we can talk about mm -hmm. the stomach aches. Um, and pay atten paying attention to the fact that headaches, stomach aches, those things take you out of the classroom, right? They take you out of the library. They, they set you up such that you have to spend time either in your room or you're going to the health center, right? It really gets in, in the way of the regular academic functioning of a student. Um, and, and maybe it, be, it becomes really important to, to, to just say this explicitly. When we're talking about race-related stress, we're talking about the experiences that students of color have as a result of the racism that they're experiencing because they're being targeted. Um, so similar to what we know about sexual assault, um, how sexual assault can leave some real um, injuries on those who experience sexual assault. Racism does the same thing. Mm -hmm. Race-related stress takes a toll on people. And if we're not remembering that racism or race-related stress is a phenomenon that actually impacts people, we will forget that students functioning is being really deleteriously impacted mm -hmm. by that, right? So it becomes important again, not only in my opinion for university administrators to be thinking about talking about diversity, equity, inclusion, we have to be talking about racism and anti-racism right. when it comes to students of color, um, which you know is a slight shift from diversity, it equity, is. inclusion work, right? Um, but if, in fact, we want our students of color to succeed, we have to make sure that we're talking about racism and anti-racism.